Hello everyone, this is Mark Atwood, Developer Evangelist and Open Source Advocate for OpenShift Origin, coming to you from just before O'Reilly's Open Source Conference, OSCON, in Portland. At OSCON, myself and several other shifters are going to be teaching a tutorial on OpenShift Origin, how to use it, how to extend it, and how to participate. We're looking forward to it, and we look forward to seeing you all there. In this screencast, I'm going to show you something I think is really cool. I'm going to set up an OpenShift Origin based platform as a service on top of OpenStack. And not just any OpenStack, I'm going to set it up on top of an OpenStack system that is real and available to the public, the HP Cloud. HP Cloud is one of the first infrastructure as a service cloud providers with OpenStack ready to use, open to the public. From the website, there's a link to the console to control my account. I'll pick an availability zone that has compute instances in it and select Manage Servers. Let's create some instances to run OpenShift on. For flavor, let's pick a standard medium that'll give us 4 gigabytes of RAM and 120 gigs of block storage space. And for an image, they have Fedora 16 Server 64 bit. I have a security group already created for OpenShift that has the ports open that OpenShift needs and a predefined key pair so I can SSH into it. I tap Create and off it goes. My instance will start spinning up. I now have a running instance. The thing that I'm most important, interested in is the public IP address of this instance. I'll copy it here, open up a terminal, and SSH into it. I'll log in as root to this Fedora instance, and there's my IP address, and it will connect. The first thing I'm going to do to this Fedora instance is update all the packages on it. yum-y update, and this will take a moment. Over 100 package updates later, and we now have an up-to-date instance of Fedora 16 server. Now one gotcha that I ran into is the Fedora 16 on HP Cloud currently does not have SE Linux installed or enabled on it. And because OpenShift requires SE Linux for its security, SE Linux is going to have to be installed. I'm not going to go into precise detail on what this takes because hopefully this problem will go away soon, but I will write up a knowledge base or blog post on what I'm about to do. First I will install all the necessary SE Linux RPM packages. There's quite a few, and this takes a moment. 32 megabytes, 4 packages, and 55 dependent packages. And now they're all installed. And now to edit the SC Linux config. We change the term setting from disabled to permissive. Now a problem that we face is that because SE Linux was not originally installed on the system, the file system lacks the SE Linux extended security attributes. Fortunately, the packages that we just installed will notice at the next reboot that the file system is unlabeled and will go through and label it. So we have to reboot the system. SBIN reboot. And that will disconnect our SSH connection. Now we're not completely blind while it's rebooting. If we go back to the HP Cloud Console and look at our instance, we have an option here to view the console log. We can see the relabeling commands as they're happening. And now we have a login prompt again, so now we should be able to reconnect. So let's go back to our terminal window and reconnect via SSH. So here we are at our prompt again. And if we say ls-lza, and look, our directory here has se Linux attributes. So now we can actually start installing OpenShift. So what we're going to do is go to the OpenShift community wiki and follow the instructions 
build a multi-node paths from scratch that were written up by Krishna Raman. We can skip the update step and jump straight to installing git ruby gemrake at NTP. Here we go. First step done. Now we will git clone the crankcase repository out of GitHub. And that was pretty fast. Now we go into crankcase and go into the build directory and run rake build setup. This will actually take a while. Yes, it did. About eight and a half minutes. The next rake step is rake dev broker. This will construct a development broker node and install it. And it takes a little moment. And now the dev broker. And now the setup stage. The command is ss setup broker. And a little bit of magic. We're going to tell the broker when, if it can't resolve an address to use Google's DNS servers. So and those are at 8888 and 8844. So what's actually happening here is it's rebuilding and rewriting the local DNS service and also creating databases that contain all the information OpenShift needs. The reason for the name service rewrite is because OpenShift applications have domain names, which means a domain name server needs to come into existence that understands how to take these updates. In this particular case, we'll run that server locally. And look, now it's done. Now let's take a look at something kind of neat. The host name of this server is now broker.example.com. Example.com is an example domain name that we're using just for this, well, for this example. In the future, SS Setup Broker will be able to contain, be able to use other domain names to make it easier to actually set up real useful OpenShift PaaS services. Now we've got one more small thing to handle here we actually need to tell the broker what its IP address is because it can't tell on its own because HP Cloud instances use private addresses which are not the same as the public IP address they're regional from. So I say ss-register-dns and then hostname broker and now I need the IP address, the public IP address of this node and there it is. I copy it here, I paste it there, and there we go. I can now actually create OpenShift applications, and let's do that now. If I say RHC domain create dash L admin, the admin user was pre generated by register admin password admin and then the name of my namespace will be admin. We create a namespace exactly like we would on the hosted OpenShift service. Now that we have a working OpenShift origin broker node running on this HP Cloud OpenStack instance, there's just one thing left to do. Actually create a running application and connect to it. So let's do that now. The command is exactly the same as it is on the hosted service. RHC app create. Then the account credentials. We will use the pre-built admin account. And then the type of the application, PHP-5.3, because it starts so quickly. And then I'll call it demo. Start it and off it goes. Exactly like the hosted service, this created a DNS entry, in this case demo-admin.example.com. It created resources and security context on one of the nodes, what happens to be the same node as the broker in this case, and then it returned to us. 
Now actually connecting to our application is going to be a little bit roundabout. Example.com is not a real DNS domain. Or it is, but it's not one that you can actually browse to. So what's happening here is, is the broker is a DNS server that's serving the example.com domain. It's just not linked up with the public DNS. So what we're going to do is trick our own local machine a little bit. I'll grab the, the um, fixed IP of the broker. And now I'm going to modify the DNS configuration of my machine. It's in network configuration. So I go to the network, advanced, DNS, add it. OK. And then apply. Now let's grab that DNS name, demo admin example.com. If I run host against it locally, we see it's an alias for broker.example.com and it has an address of 15185103.24, which is the fixed address of the machine. Let's open a tab that has a shell on the local machine and run that same host command and we can see that example.com is resolving because we've changed the DNS server for this local machine to be that of the broker we set up. So I should be able to go over to my web browser, open up a tab, and there is the well-known Welcome to OpenShift. And that's all there is to it. You go through these steps, and you yourself can run your very own OpenShift-based paths on the OpenStack provided by the HP Cloud. And I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this screencast. I hope it was as educational for you to watch as it was for me to create. Again, I am Mark Atwood, the open source advocate and a developer evangelist for OpenShift and OpenShift Origin at Red Hat. Thank you very much.